Okay, welcome. Right now we're going to be going over some of the extensions of the arch, the ways multiple arches can be combined in a way that uh, forms a new and useful structure. So we will take a look at that. All right, so um, yeah, extensions of the arch. So here we go. And here we go. All right, so we've already talked a bit about arcades, and you can see, um, you can see again, this is a pretty standard Roman arch. You can see the keystones up at the top here. Um, and you get, whoops, that was not a keystone, but anyway, you can also see the, the you know, the, the common semicircular shape of the Roman arch. You can see that these stones are flat so that they can be load bearing. Now the key here is that you've got a bunch of arches side by side. Now, not only does this allow you to have, you know, a longer span of, uh, of, of supporting structures, but if you think about some of the ways in which the arch was weak, basically what you're doing is you're, you're kind of using the weakness of the arch right next to it to, uh, to, to negate the weakness of, of the arch itself. So as a reminder, a big problem was these stones in here and then the stones on the column were pushing this way. But if you notice on the arch right next to it, these stones are pushing back that way and on the column itself, it's getting balanced out by the fact that the other arch wants to push the column the other way. So this was a very common way to combine two arches in such a way that would, would sort of eliminate some of their weaknesses and very beneficial, very useful. As we saw in the, the Segovia structure, you could make very long, long segments of, of arcades, um, that, um, that, you know, didn't, didn't seem to be supported by very much, but basically, the arch, the, the fact that you have the arches all set up one, you know, to the, to the left and right of another like this enabled the, uh, the arcade to work that way. So, um, here is another, another rather famous set of arcades, the Pont du Gard aqueduct. Um, this, this particular bridge structure was, was an aqueduct in France. And uh, I think most of the aqueduct is gone, but the, 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 they of course left the bridge in place just to show, you know, you have these, these three tiers of very long arcades supporting this, uh, this long, you know, artificial river that's carrying water to a city there. So, uh, so quite impressive. And you can see that, uh, the arches are broader at the bottom and they also tend to be wider in their supports so basically um it's it's you know they the this bottom row of arches needed to be big enough to support the top row which need to be big enough to support the uh the aqueduct itself so kind of an impressive feat there i think um anyway so there's the arch the arcade diagram and these, 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 particularly this arch on the left is not, not super well drawn because there's not really a keystone there, but, uh, but you can kind of see, you know, what's happening here and you can have the columns be pretty slender. Um, they don't need to be super massive in the arcade. And again, the main reason for that is that the, the weakness of just a single arch would be that the column would tend to tip that way and that way but when you're combining the two arches together that tends to get balanced out so when you got this row of arches that tends to get balanced out now when you get to the end of the arcade yeah you need a large structure on that last column to prevent it from moving to the left or the right but this does give you the advantage of being able to you know put a lot of them in a row like this okay next one is a vault now, this one kind of just looks like an arch, but with one exception, instead of just having, you know, a single row of, or a single set of stones, basically what you've done is you've put kind of three sets of stones and made a tunnel out of this, um, out of this arch. And we've, we've already talked about what vaults do. This is basically what a vault is. It's an arch shaped tunnel that, uh, that you make. Now, you'll notice what you've got over here. You've basically got a whole bunch of, uh, heavy stones. And again, what we're seeing here, we're seeing the, the need to, to have this, this vault supported on the, on the weak spots. So again, the, the main weaknesses are going to be where the, the tunnel meets the ground. And these, 
stones are going to want to shoot out the sides. So you have this large, this large set of stones to prevent that. We call that a buttress. So I'll write that word down. A buttress. Um, so the the arch is being buttressed. So if you ever if you ever see it's being buttressed. So if you ever see that word appear, um, you know sometimes it's used metaphorically. When you say something is buttressed, you mean it's supported by something. So this this support is to prevent the vault from collapsing. Um, okay. So. All right. So here's another vault. This is in uh, Hadrian's villa. And this one is not really made of stone. So you can actually, I, I wanted to include this because this vault is more or less made of concrete. But a lot of the same principles apply, um, like the strength of the arch in particular. It applies even if it's not, you know, it's not uh, composed of just of stones. It's composed of, you know, concrete. The, the strength associated with the shape of the, the arch and the vault is still present and that's why we still see arches used commonly in both concrete and steel so definitely thought that was worth uh, indicating uh, there's a diagram of the uh, of the, the the vault and you can kind of see these arrows are providing uh, sort of the the um, the the directions that the the stones are going to going to be pushed and this the need for this this larger sort of buttress down here in order to have the uh, the vault tunnels uh, remain secure otherwise they'll, they'll kind of get tipped over particularly as you start loading them down from above um, all right so now I wanted to talk about domes. The main dome we've already seen is the Pantheon. This is a much smaller dome at uh, at Hadrian's Villa, but the 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 idea here is that what a dome is, it's kind of like an arch that's been rotated 360 degrees around to form a room. And the nice thing about these domes is they can, you know, you can have very wide spacious rooms without the need, you know, of for pillars to support the roof. Um, the problem with it is that they tend to get very heavy towards the top. Um, and you'll notice that, uh, that if you, one of the, one of the ways that they often save weight, we saw this in the Pantheon Dome as well, is that you make, you, you put a hole in the top. Now, this is convenient because not only does it save weight at the very top, which is where, you know, where, where that, where that weight is going to put the most stress on the dome, but it also, it also lets in light into the room. So you saw this in a lot of, a lot of, uh, old Roman domes. And you can see here, um, looks like this was eventually filled in probably to support it, but we probably had some, some arches providing windows in the walls there as well. Um, so this is probably the dome you're significantly more familiar with. This is the United States Capitol dome, and uh, and and a, a very impressive dome. But one of the things that need that needed to be included in the construction of this dome is steel. And we'll talk a bit more about steel when we get to, to modern architecture, but it does allow for the, the construction of much stronger structures. So we, this is kind of a, it's kind of a bragging point of this dome, but the, the top of the dome tends to be the weakest. It's where the, the hole in the domes we saw was before. Well, in the Capitol dome, they put this huge statue on the top just to prove that the, uh, that the, 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 the that that is a strong point of the dome. So, so just to just show you what you can do with better materials there. Um, now, this is a combination, and you can probably tell that this is a certain kind of vault. But one of the, the interesting things that's going on in this vault is we don't just have arches that are forming the tunnel. We basically have arches that are going forward and arches that are going I guess backward, forward, backward, to provide a little bit more structural support to this. Now, basically, what's going on here is instead of having all the arch support go to the sides and then needing the buttresses on those sides, we're kind of having arches crisscross one of one another, and then having a whole bunch of their of the meat on a single pillar like this. Now, what this is called? This is called a ribbed vault. So I'll write that ribbed vault. 
And one of the ways you can you can you can use a ribbed vault is to make something. This this one is not exactly a ribbed vault, but it uses similar principles in that you're kind of using you're 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 having multiple arches span and create sort of a uh, you know a two different vaults in different directions. Um, this is one of the ways that a ribbed vault can be used. Now, one of the main benefits of it is that you're 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 basically forcing you're you're using the different combinations of the arches going in different directions to make it so that you only need to buttress these pillars instead of the entire one side of the vault. So basically if we look at say we look at this vault right here, normally what this would require is it would require a whole big old buttress over here. But because we both remove um, some of the stones of that vault and we we make another vault that that when these forces combine with these forces, they do they don't totally cancel each other out. But what they do is they force the the you know, the, the support of the vault into the corners instead of just the sides. So you can use this in a ribbed vault to make the vault a little bit bigger and sort of concentrate where you need to support the vault itself. So that was one of the advantages of the ribbed vault. Um, this, basically what we have here, we have kind of an arcade of vaults here. And uh, so, you know, you got you got a, a long tunnel here. I think this was for water storage. I think this was a water storage uh, facility in the, the Roman Empire. But you've got, you know, kind of three vaults here. And you can see they're they are forming tunnels, but they're they're placed next to each other. So you're taking advantage of the fact when uh, when the two vaults meet, you can you can just you can use the vaults to kind of buttress uh, one another. So this was this was kind of a way you could make a series of long tunnels that I believe was used to store water, and uh, without having a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of buttresses, you could use the structure of the vaults to support one another. Um, this one I thought was pretty cool in that basically what they're doing, and we, we see this in the, in the next combination as well, I and mean, hopefully you caught this, but basically what you have on the sides here is a series of arcades. And what the arcade is doing is it's making the, it's providing the side support for this long vault in the center. Now, the vault still kind of needs to be buttressed and what you kind of see you have over here is you have another um uh another i don't know if i'd call that an arcade but you have three other arches that are kind of buttressing this vault in and of itself so you're combining a number of arches one you're using an arcade to support the vault so you can lift the vault up higher and then two you're using another a set of arches that it's not quite its own vault, but it's um, it's you're using an, uh, another set of arches to provide buttressing for the vault. So kind of cool there. A uh, similar sort of thing is going on here, uh, where you can you've got this arcade along the side, and that arcade is basically providing the support for this long narrow. Um, this very large vault in the center. This is a, this would be the vault of a cathedral. Um, now, a little difficult to see in this picture, but you can kind of see over to both of the sides there that you've got another uh, set of arches and another smaller hallway off to, to either side of the main hallway to, uh, to, to kind of support this, the, the, the sides of this vault and to buttress this vault. So tends to the combining arches in this way was a very common way of making the um, of 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 giving of of building structures that had a lot of space inside. And we'll see this again when we start looking a little bit more at uh, at medieval cathedrals and and other things like that. Okay, so with that, that is the end of these images. I hope you found these explanations useful. I hope you caught some of these observations on your own. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time.